Hi, how are you doing? It's Chow for your best mix of music, 98.4 Capital FM. I am at the Nairobi Hospital. Now, if you don't know, November is Lung Cancer Awareness Month. And I'm very privileged to be in the company of Dr. Andrew Odiambo, who's an oncologist at the Nairobi Hospital. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. Let's talk about lung cancer. The, 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 the greatest misconception is that it is only caused by smoking. Perhaps you could start off by letting us know what lung cancer really is and what some of the causes are. You could have primary lung cancer and secondary lung cancer. So by far the commonest cancers that affect the lung are secondary lung cancers, which means that you may have had cancer somewhere else, maybe in the breast or in the ovary or in the kidney, and then that cancer migrates through the blood system into the lung. So that I see sometimes people on TV saying that you know, I had breast cancer, then I had lung cancer. No, you had breast cancer which went to the lung. Uh -huh. So that's a secondary lung tumor. So for this month of November, we promote awareness for primary lung cancer, which means that this is cancer that started growing within the lung tissue. And sometimes if it stays for so long, then it can spread to other parts of the body. Um, lung cancer is not only caused by smoking as, 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 to, as, as what many people would think that that's the cause. There are very many other causes and it depends on, on which setting you are in. For example, in areas where a lot of the building material, you know, has got asbestos and all those chemicals that are used in paint and so on and so forth, that can lead to, to lung cancer. Traditionally, people who used to build ships and so on would get exposed to a lot of these very weird chemicals and that would lead to, to lung cancer. Um, we think in, in our setup, as much as we don't smoke so much, I think long-term exposure to biomass, which is the cooning in pots that people used to cook with, you know, at so home. our grandparents yeah, and in, in the poorly our ventilated, you know, areas. tiny huts and yeah. you know they're just putting firewood in a room and cooking and inhaling the smoke and probably that may be predisposing people to to lung cancer. A lot of it may 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 depend on on your genetic makeup maybe. So probably like probably in your family if you've got these types of cancers that are inherited, then then that could account for some of the cases of of lung cancer. Um, there's not so much to do with diet and lung cancer, but we think that overweight and obesity predisposes people to not only lung cancer, but many other types of, 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 of cancers. Chronic lung conditions that stay for a long time, like people who've had tuberculosis over and over again and their lungs have been damaged, you know, those, those people can then go on to develop lung cancer. And then finally, smoking. Right. <laughs> so it comes really, it does come at the bottom of the of the food um, chain, whereas not, we... Not really at the bottom, okay. but the point is not all lung cancer patients have to have smoked to have developed lung cancer. And the vice versa is, is also true. And I think this is important because a lot of lung cancer patients face stigma. Okay. Because then, you know, even the doctor will ask me, so how long have you been smoking? <laughs> <laughs> then be like, no, I don't smoke. I don't even I've smoke. never smoked yeah. and I don't even anybody who smokes yet the patient has lung cancer. What are the what are the numbers we're looking at vis uh, men vis a vis women uh, coming into your referral office who are exhibiting signs of lung cancer, who do have lung cancer? So let me start by saying in the West, in Europe, in America, you know, and in the northern countries, lung cancer is probably the top most prevalent cancer. In Africa, outside maybe Egypt and, and South Africa, uh, lung cancer is not very common. In Kenya, uh, based on the latest uh, statistics by Global Can uh, Resource, put lung cancer at number 18 out of 20, with approximately maybe about 900 maybe new cases per year. Um, I'm not sure about those estimates, but that's a quite significant you know, number. Um, so it's not very common, um, so, so you put it there at about number 18. And we tend to see more women, at least in my practice, it's more of a, of a middle-aged to elderly woman disease, at least in the last five years. Men also do get lung cancer. And coincidentally, if it's in a month, probably there will be the ones who will be the smokers. I'm not saying that women don't smoke, mm -hmm. but um, in my, all my female patients, you know, non-smokers, 
they don't even live with smokers. The average age is probably about mid 50s to early 60s. And it would be different within the region. I'm not sure those uh, oncologists, you know, practicing maybe in Eldoret and Kisumu type regions, probably they are seeing a slightly different uh, demographic. When people come into to your office, the oncologist's office, what stage of lung cancer are they at? And what do you think is causing um, maybe the lack of detection, early detection um, for lung cancer? So sadly, I must say, um, um, lung cancer is difficult to diagnose early unless you have been isolated as a case that would benefit from screening. Um, this happens in the Western world if you've smoked X amount of cigarettes maybe for the last 30, 40 years, then you're put on a screening program where you go for what we call a low-dose CT scan to try and catch very early tumours. Mm -hmm. The earlier you catch the tumours, the easier it is to treat and the higher chances of cure. Our patients locally um, will present to the doctor with coughing, a chronic cough, sometimes they're losing weight, mm -hmm. sometimes they may have specks of blood when they cough, uh, sometimes they may have weird kind of shoulder pain or back pain. And so any doctor would immediately diagnose this patient with pneumonia mm -hmm. or tuberculosis, for example, right. and initiate them on antibiotics or anti-TB drugs. The patients would then take these drugs for months and months without improvement. By the time we are realizing that this is not an infection, that this is lung cancer, it is almost always too late. At least in the last uh, maybe five years in my practice, probably more than 95% of the patients are stage four at the time they are coming to oh, my wow. office. The very few who might be lucky to be stage three, and maybe the stage ones and twos are those who probably are going for scans for other reasons. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're getting a new job mm -hmm. and they tell you you must do an x-ray, then yeah. you do an x-ray and then you find a small tumor. But most people who are actually having symptoms will have stage four, will have stage four tumors. You talked about some of the patients coming into your office, into an oncologist's office, will be told, you know, I was getting treated for TB for a long amount of time. What is happening there? Because I, I'm not too sure, maybe so, from a medical perspective. So, so let me explain how, yeah. how this worked. So in the late 90s, early 2000s, we had a lot of HIV, and HIV comes with tuberculosis. So all the support and, and donations we got were to train people towards you know, getting rid of HIV, and TB happened to be into, in, integrated into part of those programs. So most of the doctors, clinicians, nurses, everybody knows how to diagnose TB. We have little checklists where if somebody has been coughing for more than two weeks, losing weight, coughing blood, if they have three or more of the things on that list, then they have the right to be given TB drugs. Mm -hmm. So now that HIV is under the blanket, and, and, and people with HIV are actually living well and living longer. Um, we have forgotten to retrain people that not everything that coughs is TB, but people could have you know, lung cancer. Yeah. And so we need to start thinking differently. If somebody actually is coughing for more than two weeks and, and they're losing weight, as much as you're thinking towards TB, think about also the possibility of lung cancer and refer these patients to a center where they can have tests to, to separate the two. If you don't have good, you know, maybe computer scans and so on and so forth, you really can't tell the difference mm -hmm. by doing a normal x-ray. And you as a patient, if, if, if you are being treated for a disease repeatedly, even if it's, you know, amoeba of the stomach and whatnot, yeah. and things are not getting better, ask for a second opinion. Okay. Ask to be sent to a doctor who can try to figure out what's wrong with you. You can't be taking drugs for a condition and not getting better yeah. and then keep on taking them, yeah. you know. Sometimes the doctor is not always right, you know, so. So it's really important that the referral system, yeah. even as a, as a patient, yeah. you say, I would like a second opinion and keep getting those referrals until you find out what yeah. is wrong with you. Yeah. Wow. wow. All my patients, at least in the last 24 months, who have been referred to me with lung cancer, all of them have been on TB drugs for oh, three wow. months and longer. That's really, really interesting. Yeah. Oh wow. With all the information that you've shared with us today, my question would be how often do we need to get screened for lung cancer and at what age? Because various um, so, illnesses 
have a screening process. If you're not at risk for lung cancer, then you don't benefit from screening. You'll actually be getting unnecessary exposure to radiation, which could be harmful to mm -hmm. you. But if, if you have a genetic syndrome or problem, which we have identified, or if you're a chronic heavy smoker and you have qualified, you know, maybe you've been smoking for 30, 40 years, a packet a day, then that's the type of person who needs to go for screening. And uh, um, once you cross the, 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 the line, it doesn't matter about the age, you know, you could be 40, you could be 50, you could be 60. So that's the type of patient who needs to go uh, into the CT scan machine. But then we call it a low dose CT scan. And then you go through the screening. I think it's once every year to make sure that we're not missing any tiny, any tiny lump. So it's not for everyone. It's only for the particular group of, of, of patients who are at an unusually high risk of developing lung cancer. Well, what would be your takeaway now that it's uh, Lung Cancer Awareness Month? So today? I would say as much as lung cancer isn't common in our setup, I would uh, urge the viewers, one, to shun away tobacco and be very strong against uh, the use of tobacco and tobacco-related products. I think the people who deal with legislation need to take this up and, and really ban smoking, you know, like completely yeah. and teach it like in, in schools and the little kids should know that smoking is bad. On top of that, if you know anybody who's been coughing for a long time, who's losing weight and is just on antibiotics over and over and over, they need to be referred to a level facility where they can be diagnosed or they can be checked to see if they have lung cancer. I must say, a lot of the fancy research right now in the Western world is in lung cancer. There are very oh, wow. many exciting new drugs that are giving patients a much longer life that they didn't have. You know, lung cancer patients used to last about six to eight months, and now they are encroaching onto three, four years oh, wow. with these new types of targeted therapy, immunotherapy. So there's exciting news at the end of the tunnel, but you must make the diagnosis first because if, if, if you succumb before we even know that you have lung cancer, then we don't even have the chance to treat you with all this new fancy uh, medication and technology. Is this medication and technology, the immunotherapy, mm -hmm. is it available here or is it, are we, um, will we see it soon? So it is, I have a couple of patients on immunotherapy and targeted treatment. It is here, it's still very expensive, yes. but <laughs> You know, the more you use something, the cheaper it will become. Okay. Some, before we used to say there are some antibiotics that previously were very expensive 10 years ago, but now they're available and they're very cheap. So soon they will be available, they'll be very cheap and we'll be able to use them for our patients. Thank you so much for your time and for enlightening us on lung cancer Thank and of so course much. the awareness that it's not just smoking that causes it, there's also other factors as well. That's it for this month of November. Remember, it's Lung Cancer Awareness Month. I'm at the Nairobi Hospital, and I've been speaking to Dr. Andrew Diamba, who's an oncologist who's been educating us on lung cancer and awareness. Until next month, ciao.